G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews, a not so weekly, weekly news for another not so week. And I have had a lot of feedback from the uh, video I did on internal, or not, the one I did on Ohm's Law, and uh, it was great. Um, obviously, people want more of this stuff, and it's kind of the start of what I'll be building, and I'll be doing some playlists because I'm going to do some more videos on stuff like it, more on electronic theory, some more on radio frequency theory, which is building up to that ham. Um, license thing that I was talking about a little while ago. I really want to get people to be in a position to go out there and sit a ham ticket and get the ticket and then do some stuff legally instead of flying under the radar as a lot of people do at the moment with their FPV stuff and their long range UHF stuff. So yeah, we'll try and get you all legal if we can. So I'll be putting a lot of effort into that. Now, one thing, big announcement. There you go. It's best I do. Um, a lot of people have been hassling me in a nice way to set up a Patreon account because they've said, look, you know, um, we're quite happy to flick you a buck a month or something, you know, or a thousand dollars a month or two hundred thousand dollars a month, whatever it is. I mean, you know, more is good. <laughs> but seriously, some people have said, yeah, yeah, we're happy to flick you a little bit of money every month. You know, like you've saved me so much money over the period of a few years that we don't mind throwing a little bit of money your way. And that's good. So I've set up a Patreon account. There's a link in the description of this video. You can go and click on it. The idea here is that the, the, the YouTube revenues are really fickle. They, they go up and down, up and down, depending on the time of year and all sorts of things. I mean, for example, the check I got in January for the December month was quite good because in December I worked really hard, put lots of videos up, and all the advertisers were bargaining or bidding for advertising. So the, the price per thousand views, the CPM, was going up because you know everyone wanted to advertise on YouTube. So you had to pay more to get your ad on there. That's great. So because I get a share of the revenues from the ads that appear on my channel, I got more money. Now, it wasn't a lot of money, honestly. I mean, I think that um, in terms of income, I'm well below the average of New Zealand. Well below that, I know that for sure. And even my December month is still below the average. So it's not a lot of money. But the worst thing is that come January, um, the everyone spent their advertising dollars. And so you noticed, you probably noticed in January when you were watching YouTube videos, there weren't many pre-rolls. You know, the ads that come up before the video and you can skip them or sometimes you can't. There were very few of those because all the advertisers had spent their money and the pre-rolls cost a lot more than the little banners. So all you got were little banners because there was no advertising spend. All the companies had said, no, nah, can't spend anything until later in the year. So my check for the month of January Mm, pretty sad, you know, <laughs> just as well. I'd put aside some of the money from December to cover the shortfall in January. And February is not going to be much better. Really, the advertising doesn't start kicking up again until late March, early April. And even then, it's a very slow incline as it goes up slowly until we get back to Christmas again. So it makes it hard to do stuff like plan ahead, buy equipment, and even hire someone to give me a hand out here. Because as I've said a couple of times, I'm out here, it's a beautifully fine day, there's no wind, I've got models to test fly, and there's nobody to spot for me. I'd like to be able to have someone who I could hire one or two days a week and have them come out here and sit in a chair and watch me fly. That's all I've got to do. And so, but I can't do that at the moment because I wouldn't want to commit to that if I'm unable, I'm not sure whether I can pay them because there's not a lot of money left over to pay anybody. So what I need is a nice steady income, which is immune to the vagaries of advertising rates and so forth. That's where Patreon comes in. Patreon is where you go along and you, you pledge a dollar a month, two dollars a month, whatever, a month. And so every month I can see pretty much in advance how much I'm going to be getting. And most people will sign up for a year or something. So I can say, wow, my Patreon income is going to be X hundred dollars a month for the next year. And that's great because even though it may not be a lot of money, it's a budgetable income. I can't, I don't know how much I'm earning from YouTube until I get the check but I'll know how much I'm likely to get from Patreon and it's likely to be a much steadier amount than the YouTube income. So then that makes it far more valuable from a business perspective when you're trying to operate on a shoestring and make every dollar you spend count. So that's it, that's Patreon. If you wanna contribute to me through Patreon, then please go and do so. There's details on the Patreon website on my page about what you get for your money, uh, which is probably nothing, <laughs> and uh, uh, warm fuzzy feelings, and what it'll do to help out the RC Model Reviews channel. There you go, Patreon. It is now active. I have launched my page. Go and have a look. Right, what else? Um, I've had some stuff come in, and not a lot of stuff has come in over the last, since the last weekly news, but there has been some. And one of the things that came in was a low voltage alarm. I haven't even looked at it yet. Just opened the box today. It is from, I had a card. Here we go. Volma 1.0 from Sabertronics. Ta -da! So I've been looking at that. It looks quite interesting. That'll be coming up fairly soon. Now I've got the video on internal resistance of batteries and how to calculate it and measuring the graphene batteries, comparing them to the nanotechs and 
also the Gen's Ace Tattoo batteries. And we'll just, just have a look and see. It's really interesting. I think people will find that video very, very interesting. I've already filmed it all. I'm editing it at the moment, so you can expect that in a few days. Um, by the way, if you want to see more footage, you know, I do like I did the Tundra review, the Hobby King Tundra review, and I did a flight video and so forth. But sometimes after I've done the review, I get to fly it a lot more and you get to see more of it. And that's where it pays to keep an eye on my XJet channel because um, the last video I posted on XJet well, included some footage of the Tundra, me doing some flying of the Tundra. Quite interesting stuff for some people. It shows me having more fun with the model because I'm feeling, you know, I haven't, I've had more than a couple of flights so I can throw it around a bit more. And it gives you a, a sort of a follow-up on the review. And I'm not going to just add those to the, I'm not going to do a part three with more flight videos. So go to the XJet channel if you're not a regular subscriber and, and take a look at some of the videos there. You'll see some stuff which is sort of a follow-up to the review, but not really part of the review. And in other news, I was invited to go to Dubai for the big million dollar drone championships there. Unfortunately, commitments here, um, and also the fact my passport needs renewing, and it was very short notice, meant that I couldn't go. I'd love to have gone, but oh, bugger it, couldn't go. But hey, I wish everyone who goes to the Dubai uh, million dollar drone championship thing. I wish them all the best of luck and I'll certainly be keeping an eye on it. Certainly the way this drone racing thing's taken off is absolutely excellent. I'm really enjoying that. Um, we're going to have some rounds of the drone racing here. I'll cover those on my XJet channel. It should be really good fun. So yeah, thank you for the people that invited me to Dubai and I apologise for the fact that I couldn't go, damn it all. And of course the bits for the Horus arrived. You saw that video. <laughs> they survived the journey. I even scored a free bike lamp. Woo! Um, so the Horus is going to go on the bench just now. I'm going to put it together. I'm going to fix it up. And so I'm going to then do some quite intensive looking at the Horus and see what I think of it, um, both from a software and a hardware perspective, ergonomics, the whole damn lot. And because I'm under an NDA, I can't actually post a video without clearing it with FreeSky. But I'm going to try and do a couple of videos, perhaps, where I take an overview. You won't learn much more than you've already seen, but you'll get a bit of my opinion, which you haven't already heard, on how they've put it together and how they've designed it and what I think are the strengths and weaknesses at least of this pre-production version so stay tuned for that I know a lot of people want to know about that I've had so many emails from people saying what do you think of the horse what do you think of the horse well I'll answer some of those questions in a, a video which as I say will have to be cleared by Free Sky under their NDA before I can publish it and which means if you've got questions about the horse then why not put them put them in the you know question section of this video below down there Ooh, uh, and I'll do my best to answer them uh, the limitations of the NDA notwithstanding, and certainly opinion, I can give you opinion, which is not a problem. So yeah, it, it's a very interesting radio. I can say right, right now that when I first looked at the drawings, the, the mock-ups, the renderings they did, I wasn't impressed. I have to say it looked 1980s, all those straight lines, and it looked like a tray radio, and I'm not a tray radio person. You know, I don't need a, a, a coffee, hold, coffee cup holder and a little television and a microwave oven and a, and a, a toaster and stuff on my flying platform. You know, I'm a th hold it in your hands and thumb it guy. I don't even use a neck strap. That's how old school I am. So I looked at the horse and thought, mm, yeah. oh, gee whiz. Um, I have to say I'm warming to it, okay? So it gives you a bit of a clue as to what I might be thinking about this radio. But I'm not gonna say any more. We'll get into trouble. Now the day in, a life, day in the life of video that I spoke about quite some months ago, I've actually been doing little bits. It may not be one continuous day, maybe a composite of a number of days because when I've remembered I've taken bits of footage of doing this, doing that, doing the other and I'm going to put that video together. That's probably one of the first things that my new Patreon subscribers will get to see before anybody else. I'll be putting that up for my Patreon subscribers ahead of making it public for other people to see and hopefully you'll find it interesting, get a bit of an insight into what I do and how much time I spend and how many videos I make that never make it past the edit because looking at them I go, wow, it's crap. And as you know, if it's crap I'll tell you, I've just told you, half my videos are crap and you never get to see them. So there you go, um, a little bit of an incentive to, to, for the Patreon thing. Just a reminder though, while I'm out there with my begging bowl, if you don't want to sign up to Patreon, you can go to the rcmodelreviews.com website, there is a little donate button, you can click on that and donate any amount of money, no matter how large or small, and that money all of it definitely goes straight through to buying products for review. And uh, we're getting towards the end of our summer now. In fact, it's 1st of March, so that's probably, what is that? That's, depending on how you believe, it's the first day of autumn. Certainly feels more autumn-like, it's getting a bit cooler. So um, I really want to make the most of the next month. The next month's usually got quite settled weather and it's not too hot, so we can do a lot of flying. So I really want to get out there and get as many 
reviews finished as I can. Ones that involve out there flying. So yeah, if anyone can donate a bit of cash, either through Patreon or through the PayPal account, it will be put to very good use. Don't you worry about that. While I think of it, just to follow up, bing, Walkera F210 uh, flies nicely. It's much better than the Runner 250, but, but one thing I missed, a lot of people have picked it up, I missed, mea culpa. Failsafe, doesn't work. There's no failsafe on this damn thing. So if you fly out of range, <laughs> it'll just keep on going. Another reason to fly in rate mode and not self-leveling because in rate mode eventually it'll tip over and crash. But um, yeah, not very good. So I'm gonna be talking to Walker about that and find out when they have fixed that problem. It's, it's quite bad actually. I mean, I must admit I don't normally test the failsafe on these ready to flies and on the 250, the runner 250, I did test it and it worked once you'd set it up in the transmitter. It didn't come with failsafe enabled. You had to set it up and it worked just fine. So I didn't think it would be a problem with this, but it is. So if you've got a Walkera F210, fly it, but keep it close and make sure your aerials are always in good condition. If you lose an aerial, lose a couple of aerials for whatever reason, and it flies out of range, you're buggered, okay? Be aware. Uh, as I say, I'll keep you informed. I'll be talking to Walkera about this. And that's it. I don't have much more to say. Just a talking head video this week. Sorry about that. Anyway, I've got way too much to do to carry on talking and you're getting totally bored. Eyes are glazing over. I can see it in the back. Um, so it's goodbye from me. I'll catch you again. It's time for me to get back to the bench. Bye for now.